Welcome back to another episode of Who's On First. I'm your host, Dwayne. And I am Jason. And before we start, please like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It'll help us out a bunch. It'll help the algorithms and all that cool stuff. But let's get to it. We are in, what, officially the second week? Yeah, I guess. I, well, we would say we're we're going leading, well, the second week, but leading into the second week or whatever. Right, but... Let's just get to it. This is this was the talk of social media yesterday, and of course it had to be my Dodgers, and of course it had to be Clayton Kershaw, and of, of course, course it had to be a chance at history. Um, Kershaw, his season debut against the Twins, goes out and he flirts with a perfect game. Not not we thought we thought he was done. We thought he was over. We I thought did. Kershaw. We thought Kershaw. This was. He was riding off into the yeah. sunset. We're going to hopefully get like four or five wins. I thought this was his swan song. And then I saw him pitch yesterday and I was like, damn it. I have an extension for you if you want to stay <laughs> here. <laughs> but um, Clayton Kershaw comes out. His first start of the year goes seven strong. And I mean, like, this is vintage, like, 24, 25-year-old yeah. Kershaw just running through the Twins. It's 27 degrees in Minnesota. He's the only person out there sleeveless, looking like a boss, just going through everything. And then we get to about the fifth inning, and I'm like, you know, as a baseball fan, as all baseball fans know, anytime something cooking, no hitter, a perfect game, wherever you're doing, that's your permanent seat or that's your permanent situation until whatever happens, happens. So I was working, I was at my desk, and I couldn't move anymore because when the sixth happened i was like well we're just here now i'm not going anywhere yeah. right so about the sixth inning he's sitting at about i think it was like i want to say 70 pitches yeah. by the sixth inning uh they they pan the the camera in the dugout and you see dave roberts talking to clayton kershaw and they're having a conversation i can clearly see that you know hey dave is kind of telling him how do you feel number one but number two no matter what this this is how far we're going with you. So yeah, it's beginning I'll, of the season, of course. Right. I'll give you one more inning, in which he did. He went out for the seventh. But then after that, we're not going no more with this. Right. So Clayton seemed like he was he was okay with it. Went out. We had the seventh, and of course, this whole situation. I'm waiting for like that play because every every one of these games is always that great defensive play where you're like, up oh, here it is, and then the last pitch he throws. Uh, Gio Urshela hits a rocket up the middle and Gavin Lux, crazy short hop, like pick, throws out Urshela. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if you could take him out now. Now yeah. I'm just sitting there like, all right, he's at 80 pitches. Can he get through this somehow? Can he somehow make it through this Two situation? Innings. The situation? But of course, Dave decided to take him out. He was taken out and then ended up, he brought in Alex Vasia. Vasia gives up a base hit. The whole situation is over. Give me your thoughts on it, because everyone had an opinion. Do What do you feel should Dave Roberts kept Clayton Kershaw in the game? All right, so we know why Dave Roberts took him out. You never let a pitcher, especially going in week two, week two of the season, you don't let him go past seven, right. especially a starter, especially, what is he, the number four now? Uh, yeah, I guess on paper. So and, and, your, and who's like your legacy person on the team right now. Right. But he's your legacy person on the team now. He's, you know, this might be his last year. Let him go. Let the big dog eat. Let him go. I, I didn't watch the game, but when I was reading all about this, I was like, "Ain't this some bullshit? Like, why are you going to take this dude out when you know this might be his last year? Like, this is possibly it for Kershaw, and you're going to take him out when he's flirting with a perfect game." Like, no way would I have taken him out. Regardless if it was the first game of the season, the last game of the season, we are out of the, the Dodgers are out of the competition and or they're needing for playoffs. You 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 let him go. He's he deserves it. He deserved it for what he's done for the organization. Uh so I I was kinda like, damn, that's kind of it's kinda messed up that they didn't let him go. I get it as a baseball, as a general manager has to make those tough decisions. But still, I would have been like this, like, Kershaw, it's up to you. You you brought us here. You uh, you let us know what you want to do. You're an adult. You're a big boy. You have that right to not have to worry about me policing you. You're going to be a Hall of Famer in a Dodger uniform. You tell me what's up. 
Uh, I, of course, have the complete different opinion on this. I felt like it was obviously the right move uh, for the simple fact that we have to look at the, the variables of this situation, right? So we go back to last year. Clayton Kershaw's season ends because of a flexor strain in his elbow, the first arm injury he's really ever had in his career, right? Prior to that, he was having back issues again, which he's had for all of his career, it seems like, at least the second half of it uh, since he's been 30 and gone beyond that. Um, and, you know, Clayton Kershaw was shut down for the playoffs, which is that was his first time ever not being able to perform in the playoffs. And we go through the offseason free agency. He looks like he's done in L.A., but decides to come back for his only sole purpose, he said, to win a World Series, right? So then you have this situation that we had yesterday where, yes, he's flirting with the perfect game, but Clayton Kershaw admittedly himself said he did not pick up a baseball until January, number one. Number two, before that, he had only thrown, I think the most he threw was literally like a sim game in Colorado, 70 to 75 pitches, right? So, essentially, we're already at 80 after the 7th. You're probably at the max going to throw 25 to 30 more pitches. If he somehow, you know, kind of mows him down, still maybe 15 if you get lucky, right? Yeah. To me, the risk wasn't wasn't worth the, I I guess, the the chance at history, right? Because... I look at it just as, number one, anything can happen. There's no guarantees in baseball. And people just keep – they keep bringing this moment up as if, like, oh. He he had it. He had it. Yeah. Yeah, he was cruising and whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, he could have went out in the eighth, the next next inning, and gave a base hit. This whole thing would have been over. It wouldn't have mattered. Right? But he didn't. Right? So the situation at that point is, okay, do you leave him in? If I'm Dave Roberts, I take him out like he did because clearly – Dave and Clayton were on the same page and they said, hey, you're not built up for this. Whatever you're going to do beyond this can possibly hurt you. But also, we need you for the playoffs. We need you for the second half of this year. That was the whole point that you're here. And clearly he agreed. Now, after the game, Clayton Kershaw said that he would have loved to go back out there. But he also said that his he had nothing left on his slider. He said he said the he said the fifth and the sixth his slider was pretty much dead. You had 80 pitches. I know a lot of the fans wanted to see you finish the game. What was the conversation with Dave Roberts and the ultimate decision to come out? Yeah, it's hard. You know, I feel bad for uh, for Barnsey. You know, Barnsey did such a great job, and it's fun to get to catch one of those. And so I, I wanted to do it with Barnsey. You know, um, it'd be special. And but at the end of the day, those are those are individual things. Those are those are selfish goals and. We're trying to win, you know, and um, that's that's really all we're here for. And as much as I would have wanted to do it, I've, I've thrown 75 pitches in a sim game, you know, and I hadn't gone six innings, let alone seven. And um, sure, I would have loved to have do it, but, um, you know, maybe we get another chance. Who knows? In the moment, can you reconcile all of that? Yeah. There was no part of you that wanted to fight to stay in or anything? I just said, I, yeah, I mean, I would have loved to have stayed, but bigger things, man, bigger things. He was already tired, so it would have been, like, basically a climb for him to even get there, right? He yeah. agreed He agreed with the, with the decision. Austin Barnes uh, agreed with the decision and everything like that. And I think it's a testament to Dave Roberts being the type of manager he is because no one wants that position. Of course. Nobody wants that position. When you're looking at a future Hall of Famer, like you said, you don't know if this is his last year. It's possibly his last year, at least as a Dodger. And everything he's meant to the city, you want to give him that opportunity. But also, you don't want him to once again have a situation to where – and people are like, oh, um, he was healthy because he's pitching and blah, blah, blah. Those I want people to look at the stats for people who've thrown those type of games, no hitters, and then look at the stats after they've thrown them, right? Yeah. Because that was my concern. It wasn't that he was going to get hurt that game. It was that that game was going to cause a domino effect into him possibly being hurt a month or two months from now.